As an electronics beginner, you're sometimes pretty limited when it comes to powering your newly created circuits. Now, that would not be a problem if you make absolutely no mistakes, but let's face it, that is a rarity. So, no matter whether you messed up a connection on the output side of your IC, or you mix up the polarity of your capacitor, something will get destroyed, because your power supply will pump out the overcurrent according to its set voltage no matter what. One solution to this problem is to use variable lap bench power supply with a current limit function, so that we can prevent a big current flow when an error occurs. But those are pretty expensive and obviously not usable when you want to create a battery powered project or something similar. So in this video I will show you how to create a simple circuit that connects in between your power source and your circuit and will interrupt the current flow whenever a set current limit is reached. Let's get started. The first component we need for the circuit is a relay. In my case the FRT5, which consists of a coil and two changeover contacts. That means that when no voltage is applied to the coil, pin 3 and 2, and pin 8 and 9 are connected to one another. But once at least 3.8 volts is connected to the coil, the contacts close slash open, and now pin 3 and 4, and pin 8 and 7 are connected to one another. So we can use one of the changeover contacts to connect the supply voltage to our circuit when there is no overcurrent, and open the contacts when there is overcurrent. And since I went with the normally open contact points, we must let current flow through the coil so that the contacts are closed. For that I added a NPN transistor in series to the coil, as well as a 1 kilo ohm resistor between the supply voltage and the base of the transistor. Now if voltage is applied to the circuit, current would flow through the base of the transistor, which thus closes its collector emitter path, and therefore the coil is energized and the contacts close. Of course, we should not forget to add a flyback diode to prevent overvoltages at the collector. And it is also a good idea to add a green LED with current limiting resistor, in order to visually see when there is no overcurrent problem. And to deactivate the coil if a problem occurs, we can add a second NPN transistor to the base of the first transistor. If an error signal is applied to the base of the second transistor, the base current of the first transistor would flow through the second one, and thus the coil would deactivate, the LED would turn off, and the contacts would open. To detect the overcurrent though, we need to use a low value power resistor, like the 0.10 ohm 5 watt one. By simply adding it in series between the supply voltage and the first relay contact, it creates a voltage drop proportional to the flowing current. But since this voltage drop is rather low, we firstly have to utilize an op amp in a differential amplification configuration to get a bigger voltage that we can work with. This amplified signal then connects to the non-inverting input of a second op amp, whose inverting input is directly connected to a potentiometer. By tuning the potentiometer, we can create a variable reference voltage. And since the op amp acts as a comparator, its output will be pulled high if the current sense voltage is higher than the reference voltage. This triggered output now finally connects to the base of the second transistor through a resistor, and thus turns off the relay if an overcurrent fault occurs. But there's still one problem. Once the relay is no longer activated, the flowing current decreases, which thus turns off the output of the comparator, and therefore the relay is once again activated. But since the overcurrent will once again flow when the relay is activated, the comparator triggers once again, and the cycle repeats over and over again. So to fix this, we could connect a resistor, a normally closed push button, and the other still unused normally closed contact of the relay in series to the base of the second transistor. Now when a fault occurs, the relay will still turn off, but since the normally closed contact of the relay is now obviously closed, the base of the transistor is still pulled to the supply voltage, even though the comparator output is pulled low. 
This way the relay stays off until the tech head switch is pushed and thus interrupts the base current of the second transistor, which therefore allows the relay to be activated once again. So now that we know how the circuit works, I drew a more professional looking schematic of it with the EasyDA circuit design software. I used it afterwards as a reference to build a prototype of the circuit on a breadboard. And after powering it through a 12 volt power source, we can see that by adjusting the reference voltage incorrectly, the circuit does not interrupt the current flow. But once I lowered the reference voltage to a suitable value, the circuit interrupts the current flow without a problem and also easily reactivates by using a push button, which I did not have laying around so I used something similar. Now that I knew that everything worked fine, I gathered all the required components for the final proper circuit along with a piece of perf board with copper dots and soldered all the components onto it. And of course, you can find pictures of my layout design along with the schematic and a parts list as always in the video description. After connecting all the components to one another in a time period of roughly one hour, it was time for the final test of the circuit. And as you can see, it still worked like a charm. Now of course, you could still improve the circuit by, for example, using a fixed voltage for the potentiometer so that it does not change the reference voltage if the supply voltage changes. But even for now, this simple circuit will hopefully prevent a lot of unwanted overcurrent or short circuit damages. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Consider supporting me through Patreon to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.